Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So today I want to talk about this question of uh, Christians. Are they guaranteed paradise or not? Uh, this is something that is a standard attack that I've heard many Christians use to uh, try to preach or proselytize against uh, to, to Muslims and trying to you know uh, disparage Islam. What they say is, Christ guarantees heaven for me. Can Muhammad guarantee paradise for you? No, I feel so bad for you. And so on and so forth. I've heard them use this uh, logic before. And, uh, you know, they, they, they basically say, oh, I feel bad because you're not guaranteed paradise because Islam can't do that for you, but Jesus can guarantee. Okay, well, what's their evidence that, uh, that um, they're guaranteed paradise? They will use John 10, 27 to 29, which seems like pretty solid evidence talking about uh, the guarantee of paradise. Let's see what it says. It says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. So this seems like pretty solid evidence that once somebody becomes a Christian, that's it. There's no turning back. Because what because they have gone into, you know, Jesus' hand or God's hand or the Father's hand, however you want to say it. And now because of that, nobody can snatch them out of my hand. So it's like, okay, yeah, it seems like Jesus is saying that once you become a Christian, it's never gonna change. Unfortunately, for the Christians, there's a bunch of verses that also contradict that. So let's take a look. Evidence that Christians can lose their faith. Let's see. Uh, Luke 8, 11 to 13 says what? This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts. Not from their ear, but takes away the word, the seed of faith from their hearts. So that they may not believe uh, uh, so that they may not believe and be saved. So this is saying what? That there was a moment where this seed or this word of God was in their hearts. That means what? They were believers. And then the devil can come and take it out. So clearly, that means you can lose your faith. But if that's not good enough, let's keep going. First Timothy 4, one says what? The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. So apparently you had the faith and you abandoned it. So can you lose your faith? Yes. If you can lose your faith, are you guaranteed paradise? No, because you can lose your faith. Hope that's clear. Let's keep going. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 70 to 18 says what? Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. This one I think is the most impressive. Um, uh, you can fall from your secure position. What is the secure position? Is this talking about uh, secure because uh, you're, you live close to a police station, because uh, you have a lot of bodyguards? Clearly, this is not talking about physical security. This is talking about your secure position in what? In faith. You have faith. You're a believer. You're on your way to paradise. Everything's looking good. But guess what? You can fall from your secure position. What does that mean? It means you can lose your faith. So are you guaranteed? No. Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, what about just being a Christian? Is it a guarantee? No. There are other verses that emphasize this. Uh, for example, Matthew 5.22 says, Anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the hellfire. So even if you say something rude or unrighteous, then you may be punished for it. In James 1.26, it says, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, not even just your deeds, but even what you say, they deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. So, you know, what if somebody's like, no, I'm a Christian, but, you know, I, I, I swear a lot or I say a lot of, I backbite or I say a lot of rude things. Well, according to James, uh, your religion is worthless. That's pretty scary stuff. So this whole idea, well, I'm guaranteed heaven, you know, no, not according to the Bible. Let's take a look at 1 John 2, 9 says, what anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister is still in darkness. So if you just have hatred in your heart, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of Christians that go to church and they like, they look at somebody and think, oh, I don't like that guy. Or maybe I even hate that guy. Well, I'm not trying to be mean about it. I'm just saying that, Apparently, you're still in darkness. Not because I say so. The Bible says so. So this idea that like, oh, I feel so bad for you. You're not guaranteed heaven. How are you saying you're guaranteed heaven? I don't, I don't understand how you can say that. And the Bible is saying opposite. And so just a few logical points. Life is a test. And like a test, you get the results when the test is over. Isn't it a little bit presumptuous or perhaps entitled or even arrogant to tell God that you're going to heaven? I think that that is rather inappropriate. 
do Christians see life as just a waiting room to get to heaven? That's not something I've always wondered. Like from the Muslim perspective, you know, as a Muslim, you're, you're not done your test. You're going to find out your results on Judgment Day. So obviously you have hope in God's mercy, but you also fear His punishment. And you're always working to be a better and better person. And it's a constant struggle to try to work through and, and develop your relationship and be a better person. But for the Christians, some of them are like, no, I'm going to heaven. Oftentimes you go to church and they're just singing about how they're going to heaven. They're not working for heaven. They're not trying to become better. They're just like, ah, oh, we're on our way. So like, what is life to you? Is life literally just a waiting room? Like you're just waiting to be hit by a car or get cancer. It's just like, man, I hope I die today because just going to heaven. Like, it seems like a very bizarre perspective on life, to be honest. Uh, Muslims believe that faith should be a healthy balance of between hope and fear. If Christians are guaranteed heaven, then are they really even God-fearing or not? That's a really, I really think that's important. That Muslims, we have hope in God, but we also have fear of God. So we can be hopefully described as God-fearing people. Can a Christian be considered God-fearing if he's like, look, I'm just going to heaven, so wh wh where's, the, where's the need for fear? There's, there's no need. And, and Jesus says in, in uh, Luke 12, 4 to 5, it says, Then Jesus said to the people, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of people. They can kill the body, but after that, they can do nothing more to hurt you. I will show you the one to fear. You should fear God, <laughs> who has the power to kill you uh, uh, and also to throw you into hell. Yes, he is the one you should fear. So it seems like you should be God-fearing. But that's not consistent with the idea of, well, I'm going to heaven. So where's the fear? Just going to heaven. Nothing bad can happen. Hope that makes sense. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.